We're really looking forward to talking to you guys today about some of the conventional methods that a lot of you guys are probably familiar with using, dimensional lumber, EWP, some of the, uh, the, the attraction of those originally, but some of the things that are really lacking and what you can gain when you start building with more floor trusses. You know, you've been in the, in the housing industry for a while, working with lots of different builders. Some of them have used floors, some of them have used some more traditional methods. What, tell me a little bit about some of those uh, builders that use traditional flooring products. Yeah, so a lot of the builders that, you know, we talk with and we, we, we deal with, they say they use the conventional flooring, whether it be dimensional lumber or an engineered wood product, because it's easy. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that easy is always better. Mm -hmm. So you got to understand why, what can you do to make your, optimi your, your system better mm -hmm. that isn't just ease? Like, yeah, it, there might be a little bit of pain to change, mm -hmm. but the benefits of changing far outweigh the ease of just specifying a dimensional lumber or an eye joist or an yep. e EWP product yeah. over and over and over that, again. The ease is a great point. I think coming from the engineer side, it's incredibly easy to specify a product when it's on a PDF and you know exact spans, exact capacities, and yep. they make a standard product like that too. So it can be an engineer's best friend. But yep. when you really look at what that is, well, that, that standardization bakes you into a certain type of product, a certain type of design that you don't have a full optimization that you can get out of your full system. Yep. Absolutely. I think the other thing that a lot of builders um, are attracted to is that, that standard price per foot. You know, if you, t if you look at a, a, a 2 by 12 or an eye joist, you know, it's always going to be cheaper per little foot than just a simple floor truss. When you look at the full system and how you can look at your end conditions and, and different bracings and things like that, the system is where you get the true value out of the product that, uh, that uh, component manufacturers can help builders really see the value behind that product. Absolutely. And, and you know, You'll, the, the, the floor truss is really a, a manufactured product. Mm -hmm. You know, some will argue that an EWP product is a manufactured product as well, but the difference is that the, the, I, the, the floor truss is manufactured for that house mm -hmm. and for the spans that it's hitting. Yeah, that's absolutely right. It's one of those, one of those comments that, that we use internally is that the house is, to, when you're using traditional, uh, uh, traditional components, uh, products, the house is designed around the capacities of those floor systems. When you're using an open web system, the, the floor system is what is able to morph into what are the needs of the house are. When you've got big kitchen islands or complex details or, or runs of, of MME, uh, MEP that are close to the ends, that's where the, the true value of the floor truss can really come out and morphing to what is needed for that house. Yeah, and you know, you guys that are builders out there, how many times have you... Uh been on the job site and and you have the big argument between the HVAC guy, the electrical, and the plumber. Who got into the job first? Who mm -hmm. got into the house first is the right. one who gets to choose what span mm -hmm. he gets to run his product through. Yeah. And so when you have floor trusses, it really opens up the, the ability to have some space to 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 for those trades to really work together. Mm -hmm. This picture on the screen is a great great example uh, of of how you can get efficiencies through the MEP installation. So mm -hmm. If you look at that flex duct there, uh, I think I counted nine 90 degree angles on that flex duct on that run. Mm -hmm. So when you look at an HVAC system as a whole, every 90 degree turn you have is the equivalent to 50 straight feet of run mm -hmm. when, it, when it comes to an airflow perspective. So if you can, if you can bring that down mm -hmm. and have that and, and run that, you know, imagine running the the uh, HW or the HVAC flex duct at a 45 mm -hmm. degree angle through the floor trusses. How much airflow you could potentially reduce? Right. How much CFM can you reduce your air handler size? Then right. can you re reduce the size of your your condenser on your air conditioner and saving money there as mm -hmm. well? Yeah. So there's really you know endless opportunities to 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 find cost savings that are that might necessarily be not just in the product. Yeah. And we know that when it comes to the location of those MEPs, a lot of times that's not on the plans until they get out there. Yeah. And then they really figure out, okay, what size fits into this hole? Well, when you have those open web products, you don't, you have a lot more freedom to determine where that goes when you arrive on site. Mm -hmm. Having a chase built in is great, but sometimes that chase needs to be shifted over. And once that truss is done, you have all those, po those panels already open so you can run, just shift it over very easily. Yep, absolutely. 
You know, so I think that you know, looking at the lack of MEP, uh, MEP flexibility, time on site is a big one. When you look at how dimensional lumber always has to be spaced at you know 12 inches on center, or the max when you get to um, to your uh, uh, EWP is either 16 or 19.2 on center, with your floor trusses being spaced at 24 inches on center, you just have a lot more time to be able to to spend on the other framing material and not specify on the floor product. You, you bring up a you bring up an interesting point. So when a builder is designing their electrical layout for their houses and you can look above us right. you can see these rough in boxes for for light fixtures do those always fa- do those always fall in the middle of two spans of course not no, no. <laughs> so when you have an engineered wood product mm-hmm. that has to be there you can't necessarily drill that you have right. some flexibility with floor trusses to be able to put those you know move the spans a little bit different mm-hmm. and and still have an engineered system and be able to hit that where you need it to be yep. for that. Absolutely. You have, when you when you look at all of the different areas for a floor truss that you can really work with your MEPs, all your trades that have the most optimized system in there, you have a lot of areas of the, of the floor that just haven't been accessible before. Yep. We know plumbing drops, and electrical things like that are always going to be towards the exterior of the building where you cannot put holes in EWP. When you look at a floor truss, you already have open spaces in there. We've got, you can see the posi struts above us here. We have all, uh, even more space on the side there to run all of your MEP through or have your uh, plumbing drops come right underneath there. So, you know, when you've, throughout your career, you've you've had to stamp and re-engineer plans that, how many mm-hmm. times have you had to do that when somebody cut, cut an EWP floor system or something like that when... Yeah. It's somewhere where it shouldn't have been cut. I mean, and unfortunately, the, the repairs aren't as easy. When you cut a joist in the wrong spot like that, you have to ship out a whole new piece. It's, to get the frame to come back out there one more time, you have to get the, it re-engineered. And for, for floors, it's very simple. You know, you don't hit the cords, don't hit the webs. You have a lot of open space. We have a lot of standard details on our website for when things do go wrong. Mm-hmm. And you have to put a, you know, a, a scab or something on the side. But the chances of, that, uh, of repairs happening is significantly reduced when you're utilizing floor trusses. Yeah, it, it, it's it's always interest to me interesting to me to walk to drive through a, a, a construction site and you see builders that are using a convention or an, an engineered floor system with floor trusses and builders that are using a more standard system with uh, in, engineered wood product or dimensional lumber and you see the waste. You look at the you look at the dumpsters out front right. and you see the waste. And I was talking to one builder and they're they're averaging eight hundred dollars a pole. On that dumpster, wow! And it's just and that so, not only that you're you're having that cost of the pull of the dumpster, mm-hmm. but that that's valuable material inside that dumpster that yeah. they're just wasting. Absolutely, and we know that when it comes to floor trusses, a lot of that waste is is utilized in those offsite environments with the component manufacturers. Yes, anything that's you know that's 11 inches or greater is refed into the system where they get cut that into their floor systems so that they can be utilized and provide a more greener uh, uh, provide a greener environment for that builder. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's great. I think the picture we have on the back here of those t- of mid top court conditions is another great example. How you can shove those those beams up into the the floor system <laughs> and eliminate soffits and things like that that just cause it, the, the visual headaches for folks. It, it's so funny because you know I, I'm from the Midwest mm-hmm. and we have basements and everybody finishes their basement and has that added added space you know living mm-hmm. space in their basement. And you look in the basement and there there's all these you know drop ceilings mm-hmm. and you have all of these chases that that really force you to define a room right. that layout that you might not want. Right. It may not work with how you want your basement to work, but because it's an EWP system or a dimensional floor system, you're forced to drop your HVAC system and your and your plumbing below and run it and then you have to box that out, you um, know, in a Absolutely, and even when we look at the, the the ends of the trusses where those those drops can be coming, and you have issues with where you can even hang paintings yeah. <laughs> because they are because it removes some of the space that you're able to. You have to you just lose a lot more of the livable space that that takes away from the the um, advantage of having a component based. Yeah, there. absolutely. So, um, you know, this was one of the projects I know you were out in the field um, working with an innovation build program where we uh, built a couple different houses. One, traditional methods, where you can see the EWP on the right side there, and then we had open web on the left. We've got a couple of pictures here. Talk us through a couple of the things you saw. <laughs> yeah, so we walk into the house and, and the electrician's in there, and he doesn't know we're coming in. And uh, this was in this was in the in early 22 mm-hmm. when buildings going gangbusters labor is very scarce to come by Mm -hmm. and the electrician says to us he's like if we can get more of these houses we'll show up to your houses any day of the week and he says there is nothing in this house that i 
don't have to think about if I can drill through or not. Right. So the picture on the left is, and the picture on the right are in the same spot of the house. Mm -hmm. So you can see the number of members on the right using EWP and even an LVL in there mm -hmm. versus a floor truss system on the on the left. Right. Is that right? Am I, yep. In yep. my direction, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no. nope. yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you see that electrical box there on the on the left hand side. Mm -hmm. How they actually rough that in when they use dimensional lumber is that's on a first floor foyer entry, entryway mm -hmm. that opens into a two-story great room. Mm -hmm. They actually have to run the wiring up to the attic and back down because they can't drill through that LVL. Wow. So now that you've added in floor trusses, it eliminates that, it eliminates that problem. And mm -hmm. you, it's just another example of bringing waste out. Yeah. Yes, it's a few dollars of wire, but how much labor is it? Mm -hmm. And that few dollars of wire adds up over you know, hundreds and hundreds of houses and you get into the thousands of houses, mm -hmm. that really adds up. It's a great point. And there's another pic another part of this picture I want to point out too. Look at that EWP, all of the hangers that are used to attach it to that LVL there. On the left side there with the floors, because we're able to use top court condition, we eliminated hundreds of dollars worth of hangers alone. Yep. And those hangers, you know, we know that, those, that that is um, the time to install all those as well, measuring out, making sure that the right spacing. So it really is impressive how, f how quickly they're able to finish this product versus the other ones. I think we actually have some numbers we can share yeah. on this to show just how much. Eliminating the, the total number of joints by almost you know, 15% there, that's significant. The hangers there, we just talked about that. The LVL and rim, that is a very expensive product. Very expensive mm -hmm. and, and difficult to come by. Absolutely, yeah. When you look at that rim board, eliminating all the rim by doing top cord conditions there or by using a ribbon condition on the side yep. there and then stretching your sheathing up top, that is a lot of waste and a lot of time that's removed. And we know that that LVL on the rim, oftentimes when that's left on Friday, it's not the thing that's there on Monday. Right, so right. So being able to eliminate all that product out there is a huge impact to the job. Yeah, and this is the, this is the value you get with, with my tech and our component manufacturing uh, network mm -hmm. is working with the builders and the component manufacturers to really engineer and optimize that design of your house yep. to get to get these results yeah. out there. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point. You know, we talked about one of the things, what's been holding people back from really adopting floor trusses and education, working with the, with your component manufacturer and seeing well, what is it that we can do on, on, that they can do on your jobs to really help reduce some of those, um, those pain points, understand where they could use components versus where traditional methods do make sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talking with, talking with home builders all the time, it's like, yeah, we tried floor trusses. Mm -hmm. Well, how did you try floor trusses? Yeah, we did a one-for-one -one swap out. Right. You do a one-for-one -one swap out, it's going to lose every time. Yep. Floor truss is going to lose every time. Exactly. But it's not, you know, so if you, if you design that house, optimize that design for floor trusses, right. you're really going to win. Yep, absolutely. It's, it's worth that pain of change to sit there with your component manufacturer and just talk about what your options are. What details have you been using with the EWP that you can use completely different ones with your open web solutions to get away from all those additional yep. costs? Absolutely. Yeah. So from our standpoint, there's a few different things that we see a couple builders out here asking, you know, well, what more? What, what can we do to learn more about what we can do? Well, the first thing I'd offer is engage with your partners. Your MEP trades that are out there, they're going to be working, they're going to be some of your best buy-ins on using open web solutions like this, so they don't have to worry about sawing and cutting and getting up on ladders, things like that. Um, we we'll talk a little bit about our component manufacturing network, too. Yeah, so we have a vast number of partners out there, many of which the home builders here today are using mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. And and those each one of those component manufacturers employs a trust designer mm -hmm. who can take that plan and really optimize that design for floor trusses mm -hmm. and really help you to achieve these results. Mm -hmm. We have a back of the house system too at MyTech that will help and lean in and, and make sure that the the trust designers are getting the education that they need to be able to optimize that design and to get those results that you saw on the on the previous slide. That, that, that's great. And I think the third one that really ties in that we have more information on today, if any of you are interested, is the home plan design optimization where MyTech partners with the component manufacturer that you're working with that you might be getting your, your lumber with, uh, lumber from right now to see how, we, how some of those details with end conditions or chase locations, things like that might be optimized so that we could help have a full picture of what your BIM model looks like with uh, traditional methods versus what your BIM model could look like with improved off-site methods with utilizing floor trusses.